Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of the Urban Retrospect. I am tonight's host, Ken Cloud. I'm glad to see all of you guys here uh, here again today. We got another wonderful guest that's going to talk to you about a new topic, a very important topic, especially in 2024. That topic is going to be cybersecurity. Before we get into that, though, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my fellas that we got here today. We got my dog, Big G down here holding it down in cincinnati we got my dog big west what uh yeah this guy here man we got uh ramsey james you know the gentleman of the crew you know and then we got scott jones and as always as always we got my dog pb from uh west tennessee (laughs) holding it down trying to show us how country folks really can't speak (laughs) man with a Doc Rivers it. hairline. Damn. Nice. Okay. Okay, nice. be too gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. So, you know, again, we're back with another recording. Uh, and Wait we thank minute. everybody for tuning in. Before we get started, as we always do, Scott Jones, tell the people where they can find us. Well, of course, right here on YouTube. And if you like what you're watching, please hit the like button and subscribe. And share with your friends and family. You can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, as well as TikTok at the Urban Retrospect. We're also on Twitter at Retrospect1619. If you want us to review your product, have any questions, send us an email at the Urban Retrospect at gmail.com. And lastly, to catch everything, a little bit about us, past shows, and more, just log on to www.theurbanretrospect.com. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. All right, y'all, listen. We have, we got something for all of us Black people. We got something for the ladies. We got a professional woman here. And let me tell you a little bit about her, all right? Tonight's guest is Renita M. Rhodes. She is a highly accomplished cybersecurity and IT professional with an illustrious 22-year career spanning both the private and federal sectors. She's currently serving as the vice president and lead audit manager for cybersecurity audit at Wells Fargo. Renita oversees a broad spectrum of critical cybersecurity controls. Her expertise encompasses safeguarding the central systems data, including the Cyber Threat Fusion Center, data loss protection, security information and event management, cryptographic services, patch and vulnerability management, network security management, access management, and third-party information security management. It's a lot of words. She's dope like that. Moreover, Renita has been (laughs) featured as a guest on numerous podcasts where she offers valuable insights on a wide range of topics, including including information security analysis roles and the integration of AI in education and industry. Through her multifaceted contributions, Renita continues to make a significant impact in the field of cybersecurity and IT. And the one thing that I left out, she's a graduate of the most illustrious HBCU in the land, T-S-U. Hey, wah, 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 wah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and, 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 uh, and she, she's also a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Hey. She just got her, what, 25 years? What do y'all call it? Yes, we're silver. I'm a silver... Silver hey, She's a welcome. silver Sara, right? So yes, I am. On. So let me introduce everybody to Miss Renita Rose. Give it up for you. Yeah. What up, though? Uh, <laughs> I'm tired of two pages on the resume. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a CV. That's a curriculum by oh. tag. Yeah, you, my bad, big dog. My bad. What? Did I send you that one? It might have yeah. been in the back. Okay. You, you, sent, like you, you sent me, but well, I, I put a little bit of funk to it. You know, yeah, there yeah, you did. Now, you know one thing it. you did miss, though. What's that? Mm-hmm. Because, oh, you know, know I, I'm a, like a Jamaican, whatever. Okay, talk mm-hmm. your talk. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm an adjunct professor at Maryville University and Harrisville State University. Hey. Just cybersecurity and IT classes. There you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Go yeah. ahead. This, listen, this platform is here for you to talk your talk. Yeah. Let's All be right. clear. Yes. All right. Yes. So if yes. there's something else you want to throw in, you go ahead. Well, and I, 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 and I did make a mistake when I sent you that. I didn't send you. It must not have been the most up to date because it's going on 23 years. I cut some of it. Oh, it's 23 here? Uh, yeah, it's going on. It's like we graduated in 2001. Ooh. Man. Good That's job. It, it seemed like that was just the other day, though. Man. It, it was in my book. But yeah. I, I also drink. So, I mean, you know. Y'all getting emotional over here. Ain't you? <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it don't seem like it. But nope. when I went to TSU this past weekend, because my one of my good friends from TSU, her daughter just crossed Sibbing down the road, and they all look like kids. Blow the whistle. Wait, y'all, they get they 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 cross forty eight, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Really. that's yeah. like their biggest line, I think. Yeah. I as I do believe it is, although one of my friends said I think they cross more, but I want to say that is the biggest line because when we were there, they had two, and then when Tanya and them crossed, it was ten. Yep, I remember that. Mm -hmm. My sister right. Simba Gamero. Shout out to Simba Gamero. Out of Bama. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Renita, we're gonna get started. We're gonna have fun, relax. I hope you did get a chance to pour you a little something up. I don't have a chaser. You don't have that's okay, man. Get that's man. Okay. You sweat them curls out. Is that, is that what they do at TSU? Y'all drink chasers? Hey, no, nah, hold hey. on now. That's I word. do it. That's I do word, it. Dog. Now <laughs> I do it because uh I ain't going to Alabama State. My girl went to Alabama State, she doesn't drink her brown liquor with a chaser, mm -hmm. but not me. Or these random okay. shots for oh, Alabama when you say State. Chaser. Like, hey, oh, whatever what, what, exactly. What you, what you're saying is TSU have a weaker palate than a oh, other no. states. No, no, oh, no, 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 not at all. No. What I'm gonna, saying is. We're going to edit that part out. That is. We're going to edit that out. No, no, it's just Anika herself. She she, she crazy. That's all it is. crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Listen, man, like I said, we're going to have a bunch of good time. We're going to have a good time, ask a couple questions, have some fun, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's jump into it. So first question, um, can you give us, because it's not just our listeners and our viewers, can you give us a um, a dumbed-down version, a cybersecurity for dummies description of your career field, and let us know how you got into the career of uh, being a cybersecurity professional? Okay, so basically. What I do as a auditor, so if anybody dealt with auditors before, you kind of go in and make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do. One, they, you have policies that are written and you, you should abide by those policies and procedures that are there. If you veer from them, then that's when you tend to get dinged. So with cybersecurity added on top of that, you include all of the, everything that protects the organization. So cybersecurity is there to protect data, the network. Um, well, you have physical security. It's also part of cyber. Um, so also kind of protecting the building. So, you know, if you're badging in and out, that's a way, that is a control to make sure people that are coming into the building or that should come into the building. And with cybersecurity, basically, Logging into the systems and getting gaining access to certain data, it's still you still have that same concept of you're supposed to be here, and if you're not, you shouldn't have access. So we're there to make sure people have that access, and if they don't, they're kicked out. Um, and here to make sure people can't break into the network or to the system and take data from us. And if they do, then you know that's a huge problem. We also there to try to educate people on cybersecurity so that we have a cybersecurity awareness. I know a lot of people don't pay attention to it and think it's stupid, but it's there to help protect you because sometimes if you let certain things in, some people get fired for that because they maybe they let they clicked on a link and from that link they were able to 
Burl and the network, pull data, some, put in a ransom, put in some code where they're locking the system up and no one can get to it unless they say, you gotta pay for it. So most times if you pay for it, you just pay for it, they still may release your data. So just, we're there kind of like protectors. Protect and serve, that's what we did. Glad <laughs> that, that kind of ties into my question. Uh huh. Um, one of my questions was kind of to get more dwell in more to ransomware. I know we just had the big ransomware attack to change healthcare that was a part of United mm -hmm. Healthcare Not that kind of like stopped people from getting prescriptions and bills and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, I know Fulton County of Atlanta got attacked in the ransomware, especially during what's going on with the Trump trial. And other mm -hmm. counties and hospitals and other institutions are getting attacked by these groups. Can you go dwell more into ransomware and, you know, for us? Okay, so the reason why those organizations are getting attacked is because healthcare, cities, counties, states, education, tend to be some of, they have the worst security posture that's out there. Um, also including utilities. So anything dealing with critical infrastructure, they have bad, bad security posture. And that is because most times they don't have money. Mm -hmm. um, they don't prioritize cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is should be prioritized by all organizations, but people tend to push it back because it doesn't allow you to get in, allow you to do certain things um, because you have to have what they call controls, just basically um, things in place to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Or like if you're signing off on something, like say if someone has to sign, sign like give out money, pay for something, there should be a control in place, place like um, on the finance side, they will have a control in place where like you have to have reconciliations or you have to have like a, approval. But the thing with the schools, the cities, the states, the counties, healthcare, um, as I said, critical infrastructure within utilities, they tend not to have all those controls in place to kind of stop stuff. Um, as you saw with the shutdown of the gas pipeline in Georgia mm -hmm. in 2020, the reason why that ransomware got in is because they didn't have, they weren't patching. So with them not patching, when you say patching, that's you know how you, we get these security updates on our computers and they mm -hmm. tell us like every month you need to patch this. That's what a patch is. Um, and sometimes it's it's not always security, it's other patches too. And if you don't do it, you have a vulnerability as a whole that somebody could get into. And all somebody needs to do, because you have users, users are the weakest link to, <laughs> I would probably say anything, especially cybersecurity. If they click on this link that's sent to them in the email, in a phishing attack, this normally starts with a phishing attack. Um, they click that link, and they're able to gain access to that network right then. And then from there, they're able to, they normally sit for a while to kind of um, do recognizance where they're looking at your network and gaining all this information about it. Then they're able to burrow into the system and check for different holes. Most times, the, most times the vulnerability has been out for years or months um, where letting the organizations know there is a something you need to do. And you could tend to find those uh, at the National Vulnerability, National Vulnerability Database. It's online. Um, I wanna say it's at cert.gov. They tend to have something there. Um, you have what is called the uh, CVEs. I, I can't think of the um, acronym at the moment. But that's where you tend, they're talking about all the vulnerabilities. But um, so these companies tend to be informed. They just don't patch it. They sit, oh, ain't nothing going to happen. Oh, happens. this is internal. 
we have we have an internal network where we we have firewalls that's outside and they can't get to it. <laughs> yeah, they can. And then the other issue is that this being that I didn't look at Georgia and Chan Healthcare and United Healthcare, but I can assume. I want to say this was a ransomware attack. Yeah, it was a ransomware but, attack. Yeah. And with that, I'm sure it was probably they got in through um, a vulnerability like what I'm talking about now. Another problem you tend to see when they do this when and they actually pay the ransom mm -hmm. is because they don't have backups. So if they don't have backups, they don't back up their network or back up the system and it's off-site somewhere, then they can't get back to their data. So they tend to pay for the ransom. And then they pay the ransom and they think they they just have to hope and pray that they never release this data because they can release it after that. I mean, if they're a criminal. What are criminals gonna do? Keep getting money. You gonna make me listen to doing cyber training. Yeah, you need to. <laughs> You right. need to. AP, I, I, I be in the trade a lot. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> don't make them late. Okay. Yeah, I'm because like, like I think I think that the change healthcare they were asking for like damn man, I think almost like damn near a billion something dollars. I yeah, think that's for a lot of money. Be yes, because personal health and personal health information is I want to say one of the highest paid forms pieces of data that's out there now. In the past, used to be credit cards, but you know they still go after credit cards. And I got a, I was traveling this past weekend, so this is personal right here, not just talking about companies. I was out there, I was out there at the airport, and I was you know at the little store, getting something, you know, getting some, probably some candy. Anyway, I noticed, you know, when I walked in, it was like it looked like a lot of people in there. I ain't paying no attention. It was like some Asian kids in there. I ain't paying no attention to them. And then, um, yeah, I got something the first time. Then I left out and I came back and was like, dang, I forgot. I should have got this. I went and grabbed it, went to go pay. Um, first time I used my credit, well, used my, my card. And I noticed, you know, the little girl, I thought she was just right there because, you know, she was getting something. But the second time I noticed I used my Apple Pay. And I noticed these two girls came close. And I paid attention to them because I'm like, why the hell are they over here? They, you know, what are they looking at? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from Michigan. I know that question hasn't come up yet. And so, you know, I tend to be a little more leery about people anyway, but I looked and one of the little girls had, they were trying to use their phone to sniff that, inform, sniff that traffic between me using my Apple Pay and to pay for the stuff so they can get it and, and take my information. So I immediately turned off my card. It's been off since then. I mean, I hear stories of people getting their phone, I mean, their card scanned way in their wallet, standing mm -hmm. away from the credit wait, card. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, yep. Pete. Hmm? They can do that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I said no, the video. I'm with, with the Apple Pay. Man, yeah. That's what I was surprised. Because you send I'm... the frequency out. Yep, you do. You send a it's, frequency out nonstop. When you when you click on the app, it sends a frequency. Anybody mm -hmm. can catch it, but it's yep. a hot second. Yep. And so and that's she what got she was close doing. enough to catch hers. Yeah. So don't use Apple Pay, is what you're saying? Not when somebody's standing around you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. Man, and your credit card sends out a signal 24 7 in your wallet. Mm hmm. So they can scan your ass, no pause, and pick up your signal. <laughs> so that's why they say when you go overseas, yeah. Make sure we probably need it here in the US. The thing is that the US, they still trying to use these bars, you know, that barcode in the back that's easily that, that magnetic strip that's easily stolen anyway. If people can replicate that information and send it and put it on a hotel card. Um, but with the new cards with the little chip in it, they can still they have a certain reader they can read it. So they say buy a special wallet or a special purse to kind of block that frequency. Right. They've been recommending that wallet for years, though. Yeah, they yeah, have. They have. That's, that's RDF new, something? RDF oh, oh, do y'all have one? I do. No. I, I, do. I, I have a purse from when I went to Italy, but, you know, it's not cute, so. 
Yeah, Gucci yeah. haven't made one. God right, forbid yeah. it not be cute. Right? <laughs> yeah, Gucci, yeah, exactly. Yeah. My information. I you. <laughs> now, now, I, this is this is another question. Just to piggyback off of that, my my question would be my last one. Uh -huh. So, like, can they catch these groups that are doing it? Man, so I, I'm telling you, I. I wanted to catch them and throw that little girl down. But, you know, how would it look with a woman beating up on this little girl? I would have did it. <laughs> Man, I tell you. But what I end up doing, I, I let the store know. Because at first I was like, I don't know if the store is in cahoots with them or not. You never know. Sometimes they are. Yeah. But I let that woman know. And, and, um, and then she put them out. And then when I saw when she put them out, it was some adults with them. And then when I was walking to my gate, I saw this Asian man walking. He had like this big old, it looked like a soup, like a luggage. But I was like, I could tell he's with them. And I should have went and told the police, but you, you know, they probably don't know what to do with that. Oh, the handler. Yeah, I, that's I was what talking, it looked like, like. I was talking about like the big, you know, like the big, um, the hacker, the hacker gangs. Well, sometimes it's state. Um, nation state hackers. Mm -hmm. So Russia, China. I know Iran is doing stuff now. Um, sometimes, you know, they might be in another, most times they're in another country. So mm -hmm. we don't have jurisdiction to get them. Mm -hmm. Or, and then if we, but then they also use proxies, different servers. So proxy servers where they can bounce across the, the world and you never really know where they are. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to get them. In your opinion, was AT and T system shut down a cyber attack? A cyber attack. It wasn't a cyber attack. I know I saw something on TikTok where this one guy was saying, "I can't remember the stuff he was saying." It didn't make sense. It's if it yeah, was a so, cyber attack, so what? I mean, because if they don't have our data, they right. don't have our data. So right. if it was more so. Only time they, I mean, they will have to report a cyber attack in the 10Ks now because the SEC requires them to, any companies that's publicly traded, they have to mm -hmm. report it in their 10K. Right. Um, right. But if it's not data specific in regards to customer data being released, um, then they don't have to re notify us in regards to that, meaning that um, no one is at risk. So I got another question for a follow up to really what he just asked. Uh, I want to know, in your opinion, how close are we if you saw the movie um, Leave the World Behind? I haven't saw it yet. And I you drive a Tesla. It? No, and I drive a Tesla. That's why I want to watch. But so but it was so it wasn't. <laughs> so for anybody who hasn't seen it, it's really. Um, it's about a whole bunch of stuff gets crazy. I don't because I'm trying not to tell everybody about it, but well, you know, and you know, that's that's what they're trying to predict for um the eclipse. Um, they're trying the to say eighth. we're supposed to, yeah on the eighth. They're trying to say we're gonna have three days of darkness. And I had no. some. I saw some dude talking about um. It won't be. If, he was saying we had the microburst. We had the microburst this uh this week and next week. So if anything's gonna happen, it should happen this week. Yeah, I, I don't believe that. That's that's. So, but the eclipse are not doing the microburst uh, affect your the cyber world more so than the eclipse will. So yeah. I'm thinking that it's paranoia, people. When people say that, like yeah. I believe, I believe what right. you what you're saying, parent. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think that name. people that's that's Negro logic. And I, I man, want man, well, this this guy I saw today, he was talking about it's gonna be some black plasma that's gonna be outside, there and they're gonna be go. calling your name and. I was just like, uh, off the weed. <laughs> no, I think he on more, more than that. He probably That's on that awesome. on that oh, pink man. powder. He Everybody's probably on that pink trying powder. to hustle, man. Yeah, Everybody's awesome. trying to hustle. They trying to get them likes. They trying to get it so they can get paid at the back end. Yeah, you should have yeah. made every re retrospect soda glasses. Oh lord, <laughs> <laughs> got paid. <laughs> but you know what though? Somebody, it's a. Excuse me, um, it's a guy here, a promoter. They having a party during the day. Hey, they gonna turn into uh, vampires, <laughs> like on Blade. Yeah, yeah. So they having a party during that time of day. I was like, hey, they talk about we supposed to keep on get all our food, make sure we got enough water and all this stuff, and batteries and flashlights for up to three days. And y'all having a party? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, heard, I heard they got free brown <laughs> liquor for you. 
Well, you know, hey, they might. You know, they might. He the bros, so you know, the bros tend to take care of me. I don't know if it's because my oh, daddy going, but okay, okay, okay. But it doesn't matter. They don't have a chaser. There you go. <laughs> they will have no, a chaser. Now nah, they it will. Just like the 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 bro. The bros. The bros. Look, they they have, uh, know, well, you it's know her brother drink like, like hey, 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 wait, hey, hey, there's gonna be hey, no Scott, hate. They ain't gonna have no plates either. There, there, there's gonna be no hate. There, there's gonna be there's gonna be no hate, and we're gonna stop the hate right here. <laughs> hey. No plates. Hey, no Y'all gonna have cute plates and no food. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> you put it in my hand. Exactly. <laughs> so what would you say is the biggest cybersecurity risk our country has today? Right now? The biggest cybersecurity risk is probably our infrastructure. I was about to I was about to say not Alexa? N no. <laughs> I mean they listen look, they listen to you now. I mean that's why I don't even I was given an Alexa, but I got rid of that because um, I don't want them listening to me. Exactly. But, you mean the echo? You mean the little echo thing? Yeah. yeah. Yep. But I would say our infrastructure, um, not just the grids, because you got the grids, you got the, I always say this wrong, nuclear power plants. You also have the water supply. All of them are using old technology. Just like that gas pipeline, they use old technology, meaning that they don't have patches. Um, some of these systems that they're using are running operating systems that are no longer supported. Um, or they're using operating systems that, have, that are known to be have been hacked in the past. So a lot of the operating systems that they kind of use on their machines, on their critical infrastructure, um, are susceptible to the stuck next hack that was out there in the past, or the virus that Israel used against Iran some years ago. Mm -hmm. And we still have those running. So that right there is our number one cybersecurity threat. Now, We, and when it also comes to the nation states, we don't have enough people in cybersecurity to help defend our country. So when people tend to think of the military, they tend to think of boots on the ground. But you gotta, you have cybersecurity mm -hmm. as well. And we don't have enough people um, at all because Russia and China they, you know, they they are always doing something. And like I said, I know Iran is doing stuff now, but they're always attacking us. And, you know, there is a term, even though, you know, when they attack us, we shouldn't attack back. When we when I was talking on the panel on Tuesday, they were talking about that, where you shouldn't attack back. If you do, you can get in trouble. But we we attack back all the time. No, I know the military does. <laughs> military now, personal. I mean, like corporate America. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah you're not supposed to attack back. But um, back. yeah, you want to get their loot back. But one thing I thought about during the, <laughs> according to Trump, you know they were, what are they? What did he call them? Um, I forgot what he called them. Whatever mess he be calling those people the insurrectionists, all those people that were in the Capitol on January 6th. One thing I thought about during that day, and we, some of the other people at Cyber were talking about it on Facebook, was all those people in there. How do y'all know all those people were American? That's one, true. there could have been any one of those people. They were throughout that entire Capitol. They could have stuck something in the network. And yep. knowing what I know from when I used to work for a federal, well, it was a quasi-federal organization. Um, not saying they were bad, but just knowing and dealing with, you know, companies, 
all corporate America, all the companies in corporate America don't have a great security posture either. But sometimes if you're able to go into certain organizations and you're able to stick like log into your computer into their network, just plug it in and you get at gain access, that's a risk. So if they didn't have that set up correctly and someone stuck something in there, it could have gotten the network and they could have got all that information. So to me, that was another risk. So let me, let me I want to piggyback off that question and, and kind of pull my question forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what about chat GB, GBT? Chat and, GBT? And what's the other one uh, that they're trying to uh, TikTok? What about TikTok? Oh, so Okay, so I have a TikTok video about about them trying to stop TikTok. But you got a TikTok GPT. about TikTok well, on TikTok. That's, 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 mm -hmm. that's, we're not a <laughs> yep. form of, of cyber attack, right? Using this platform to steal data, use your data. But yeah. I guess you, you're giving it to them. Well, so yeah, you're giving them that information. Um, but now with Chat GPT, Chat GPT can be used. It, well, it is used one to make phishing emails better or phishing text messages better um, or phishing. So you have phishing, you know, normal through email. You have smishing. That's when you get to text messages. Then you have phishing where that's coming through your voicemail. So normally if you see those messages come through, they used to have a bunch of typos and inaccurate grammar. Well, with ChatGPT, it's making it easier for them to clean that stuff up. And, you know, people tend to click the links. Um, that You could also create malware on there. Although, oh, goodness, I don't want to come out. Although, ChatGPT will tell you, we I don't ever say, it'll tell you it can't make a malware. You can't say, create a malware program, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You got to change it up and, and massage the way you're saying it. Massage your prompt. But it can create code for malware. So that's another security threat. Um, with AI in general, you can have, you know, how we're doing all these photos, is doing all the videos, and you can you have apps that can actually take your voice and create defects. Um, so all of that, bringing that together, that is a cybersecurity risk. But with anything, it can be good because cybersecurity, you do have AI or data machine learning within cybersecurity tools now um, to help with cyber attacks. But now as far as TikTok. Now, initially I wasn't on TikTok because I remember reading about all the holes. They had a lot of what they call um, hooks into the code to where they could get in and see your information. Um, those are called um, backdoors and you could get into the code. But supposedly, once I started seeing, and this was after Trump, you know, was trying to get it banned initially because he got mad because of the little kids made, <laughs> they messed made up his, uh, yeah. yeah, they made fun of him. So that's why he didn't want it. And then they tried to go about saying, oh, cyber, it's security, you know, security issues. Now, um, once they kind of cleaned that stuff up and I saw that they were on the United States, they had pres a presence here as far as their, the company's computers and their network. Then that's when I got on it. So we good but, now. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm not going to always just say everything is good because one, you're dealing with apps, but um, normally when you have an app on an Apple product, mm. <laughs> I did that specifically for Ken. <laughs> yeah, ain't, ain't nobody paying attention to you, girl. <laughs> so Apple tends to go through a more rigorous testing than it does for the Androids. The Androids is open source. And open source, anybody can create an app on there. And they, of course, you know, if you have that, 
any you can have some fake apps out there. Yeah, Apple, but Apple did it for it. money though. They're not doing it for security. But it's security though. It, it's added mm. security, even even All even right. if it is for money. But um, so just any app just can't get on there unless you jailbreak your phone. Then hey. once you do once you do that, then you you putting your phone at risk for a lot of cybersecurity attacks. Well, but, let me ask you this then. So as a black woman like yourself in your career field, are there any challenges you think different from everybody else? Being um, a black female? I say just being black in general. Hey, <laughs> why you say that? Well, one, the industry, we only have like 8% of the, it was like eight, eight or 9% of us mm -hmm. in, the, in the entire cybersecurity industry. Um, I mean, that's a little higher than what you say a, it is for like the medical field, but it's still, our numbers are low. So you still have to deal with implicit bias, especially <laughs> from our industry tends to be old white men. Mm. But so, as you said, so a black person in general, they can have a problem in dealing with this industry. And I will say the people I tend to work with, most of the black people on my team are African. Oh, this so, was homies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I would say there were maybe there were three black men that I worked with on a cyber four since I've been in cybersecurity. Oh. What, so, what was your, what's your major? What was your major? My, business information systems. Business information systems at Tennessee yeah. State. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to the yeah. business. Yep. Yeah. I was in, yeah, I was with Ty. But um, yeah. I, I want to answer the question about TikTok. Mm. I know I yeah. we kind of veered off the side. Go ahead. But with TikTok, so the problem with, well, the issue that they're talking about, the TikTok, they can get, get our data and then influence people. Well, a lot of people are very influ <laughs> easily influenced today. Even grownups in their 40s and 50s. And so that's one thing I can see, because if you notice the total negativity that you tend to see out there on both sides, male and female, just everybody like this going at it um so they're easily programmed so being that i used to write programs before i did what i'm doing now I what, language, see it. what language you wrote in? so i used to write in cobol um visual basic um what's called people code so i saw the uh, visual basic no i i, I didn't do fortran i didn't do fortran we ain't have to do that <laughs> you know what nah. i'm talking about <laughs> oh, that's the engineering did. school engineering <laughs> yeah, I had to do Fortran but uh, my sister did and she was but well, she was a computer science major but um, I, I but I'm teaching Python to my students now but right. so, but with you know if you have that ability you see all that logic that you guys you can see these people are being programmed but the thing about TikTok because everyone is talking about, well, oh, China, China, this, China, that. They got our data. And it's a Chinese app. You know how many apps are international apps? And if they're international apps, it's their apps that are from Russia. China and Russia has the same, basically the same laws. Other countries have some of these laws as well. The laws are, if you're operating in our country, we have to have the ability to see your entire network and the data that you have there. Now, that doesn't matter if it's brick and mortar or if it's an app. And so when they're constantly talking about TikTok, I remember there's an app that people tend to use for, um, it, they had an issue, it was in the news before, called FaceApp. FaceApp does the same thing. China, that's a Russian app. Anything in Russia, they, they can see into it. They got the data. And then, in addition, TikTok took measures where they separated, they segmented the network where they have like US data. And I think they're using AWS um, as far as their data in the cloud. So our data should be segmented from the other data in China, supposedly anyway. 
So what they did is what a lot of organizations do every day. If they're using the cloud, they're segmenting data. Some of them, and it's if they're international companies, they're doing the same thing. And so I always, that's why I question, why TikTok? Why not Facebook? Facebook is operating everywhere as well. So is IG. So is Deloitte. So is all the big four, um, Pepsi. You know, just basically a lot of American companies are on the soils of other countries. So that they're gaining access to our data. And if you also want to be technical, even though they they have vendors, if you're dealing with third-party vendors, your third-party vendors have vendors, and those vendors have vendors, and those vendors keep going on. You don't know what country they're in. From my notes, I understand you're an you're a author. So how many books have you written? I've only written one. It was a white, it was a white paper. Oh, oh yeah. we do white papers. They work out of time. But you know what? I published it. Oh. And but then okay. if you think about it, just even with the audit reports, mm. I've been debating on I have like a book awaiting me to actually do something with it. I just haven't done it. I ain't got time. Ah. So so from one author to another. Because yeah. I got I'm published as well. See, can you be how you know your boy? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> but I'm yeah. Not. So you you gonna write you, so you are gonna write a book, you're gonna get one out. I, I started a book, Cybersecurity for Kids. Oh, nice. And but it was, but I know people are doing that, but I have a different spin on it because of my nephew. Listen, I know a good site where you can come out with the release date, the early really? retrospect. We, we, we release that thing, you bring it, bring it to us. We can have a talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Don't yeah, because it. I think out. this one, this hey, one, this will really talk. help. How how old is your nephew? Tyler is now eight. No. He's he's nineteen. Okay. He'll be twenty this year. But okay. that's in that's in age. Okay, yeah. Come on. My son is eleven who's really in the computer. So Yeah. I'll be real okay. interested if you came out with a book because we're trying to get him to something because he's Still. into that. Yeah. Yeah. So there are programs out there for kids his age too. I would have to look them all up this yeah, like everywhere. I, I have to get with you. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Look at look at Wes. Got to have a little coder in the family. Hey, that would be good. Home, man. Yeah. You see this house. I ain't finna be taking care of no wrong kids. <laughs> <like it. laughs> hey, Pete, he got to figure out how to get some more money going to Alabama since Saban left. Man, they, yeah, they, uh, yeah, he gonna be crying. They need to keep them oh, recruited. No, you know what? I don't like Nick Saban anyway. Oh, since well, look, uh, to... you don't like women. Yeah, it's a reason. It's a reason. Michigan I don't like. State. You said I don't like. You, you already know. Look, yeah. State. Look, because what did he do at Michigan State? Nothing. Nothing. Took the money and ran. Say it with your chest. Damn. I know, right? good for my, <laughs> my whole state school. Well, look. Ah, <laughs> baby. So Man, yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad we changed the vibe. We're about to go into some more fun stuff. Yeah. Look, that was great getting a chance to learn about cyber uh, cybersecurity field, the things that are important. Some of the scary stuff that's out there, but now it's time to have a little bit of fun. All right. Um, now I saw you. You you went ahead and you did you did your little um cyber. You broke into our, our our Google account and started reading the notes that we had. I didn't. But then you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they gonna ask them anyway. Man, okay. I'm a little hacker, man. So it's, it's funny. I had a guy try to tell me that mess before. I was like, no, I ain't no dang old hacker, dude. I just I, saw the shit. So we mm. we we know that you don't broke into somebody's account, but that's okay. You don't got to let him have the bumble. He he probably he, he probably had an iPhone and she walked no. by him and, and snatched it out the air. Like, oh, this what she looked like. Right. Okay. It, it was it was a woman, but it was only because of this stuff just popping up. It was like right. his his frat brothers, right? That mm. let me see a pattern that mm, right. Okay, I pick right. up on patterns like that. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was just he, like a computer lady. He, he yeah. wasn't. He wasn't a Q. Grown Qs don't cheat. Hey, he hey. was a Q. Grown. And, grown. and he, he's a, grown. he's a, he's an adult. Grown. In age. I gave you a qualifier. She like yeah. She like your grown Qs. Them baby puppies. <laughs> so look, this is a part of the show that we call this or that, uh, okay. where we we're gonna give you two choices, no penalty. 
no penalty for you to pick one versus the other, but it's a chance for us and for the audience to get a chance to know you a little bit better. Okay. All right. All right, and since since you already know what the first question is, we're just gonna go ahead and get we're gonna jump into it. So everybody, listen. The woman that we're sitting here talking to, she has a bit of a split personality. She doesn't know where uh, she's from. All right, no, yeah, she I don't know. know. But I can say this because we already had this discussion somewhere along the line. We can folks someplace, someplace yeah. down the line, right? But so we got go ahead, in Birmingham because we we gonna go ahead and we are gonna get it popping off. So check this out, once and for all. Detroit or Inkster? You talking about is this where I'm from? Wh whichever one, whichever way you want to answer it today. Oh, today, dude. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm from everywhere in Southeast oh, Michigan. If you want to think about it, cop out. Cop no, it ain't. Out. No, it ain't. They do a TSU. Oh. They cop out. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you the reason why. So I was born in Detroit. We just, we lived on the west side of Detroit. And people, if you want to be technical, for those who's from Detroit, I mean, I know none of y'all are, and Ken, you know, he's from Cleveland, still. You know. um, but I was from, I lived on Clover Line and Cherry Line between 90, I-96 and John, not John R. Um, you don't even know. Liz, shut up. I was over there near Livernoy, but um, it was on the west side. It's bad. It's another um, freeway that goes over there. What, 96 and 94? No, not, no, not. Well, 94 was a little way out. You but it was. Back. No. What, what is the ink? 75? You said, what is the inkster? Yeah. <laughs> I'm from the South. Inkster uh, is six miles. Yeah, I don't know is, is. So, <laughs> inkster, so, so you got, so you know Detroit. Everybody ain't living in the city of Detroit. No. So you, your black people are all blacks aren't there, and Inkster is a downriver city from Detroit. What I mean downriver is off the of downriver. They call it Detroit River. I mean it's off the Detroit River. So Inkster is six miles away from Detroit. When my mom left my dad, we moved to Inkster. And the reason why I say I'm from everywhere. I lived in Detroit. I lived on the west side. I lived on the east side before, but not over there by Mac. That's where my daddy lived. That's, That's where Ken it. lived. I wasn't. I wasn't over there. Well, I, I was. I I was further up, off of East Outer Drive, near ninety four. I know where it is. Yeah, that area was you know a little nicer. No, but, I was, uh, Mount Elliot and Gratchit. Cause... That's that's where my daddy lived. Mount Elliot, Gratchit, Mac area exactly. Mm -hmm. And his family that moved up from Birmingham, that's where they moved to. But um, so I was from there, lived east side. I lived in Southfield. I lived in Royal Oak, Michigan. My family now live in Farmington Hills. So everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, from yeah. South. I, I saw she she dodged the question. You see, you see if she hit us. Good. She hey, because, because, I mean, you because, need to drink some dark liquor to answer that question so politically. <laughs> Because so, Inkster is Detroit. People try to say, oh, that ain't the city, blah, blah, blah. It's the same people. So we were joking around when we got started with the show, and we know that um, you think that you can dance and everything. So I'm going to go ahead. I need you to settle a debate. The best. I'm a, okay. The, the, what, what's better, the Detroit Jit or Chicago footwork? And be careful because there's people watching. I ain't worried about Chicago at all. It's Dang. Detroit Jit. Detroit has already so they so y'all might not know this if y'all know you look it up you, you gotta look it up on YouTube right but there was a competition between the Detroit JIT and Chicago ugly footwork crap and they had a like a full competition and they had trophies Detroit won footwork is ugly mm. now is Memphis footwork Jook? is that like is that like Explain what Chicago footwork is, because I know be like, like Chicago box. <laughs> you know they be doing that. You know that be footwork, 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 foot, foot, footwork, footwork. You know that's how they feet go. Hey. It's just ugly. Okay. It's ugly, and they. I don't. I just don't like it. So Detroit juke. I'm what they dance to house music, Scott. Oh, it's kind of okay. like they juking up there. 
Okay, so I'm 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 going back then old school when I say bop, you know, where you're kind of like a step, step side to side. Nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, uh-uh. You're going uh-uh. Further, uh-uh. it's yeah, fast. It's so think back to um, like somebody said, house music or like what we call it booty music. And I was growing up, but like or club music, you know, like uh, where are you from? Louisville, Kentucky, originally. Oh. Oh, bless her. She felt oh. sorry for these guys. She's like, <laughs> but boom, boom, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Here's I'm trying sandwich. to think with the, with, you know, at college, you know, if you had more people from Chicago or Detroit, you may have heard it. I'm sure um, the, the Southerners, they know our music. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I believe they play it in Cleveland, but I know Chicago, Detroit, um, Baltimore, Jersey. They tend to play the same. I'm not gonna say it's always the same club music, but it's what they. It's called dirty. I mean, um, ghetto tech. Something that's what if you look that up on on Wikipedia. But it's let me see. I know I got it on my phone. I got yeah, some straight up. We call both of y'all music house music. But so, no, it's a different. It's a difference. So house it is, music but is not to us. House, yeah, house <laughs> music is totally different from that. Truthfully, house music is house. That yeah. is ghetto tech. Ghetto tech. And it was started tech. Well, actually, techno was started in Detroit. Yeah. But house music was started in Chicago. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. All right. So let's we we gonna we're gonna move on now. I got you know I I see that. Uh, and I, I've known you to wear many different hairstyles, and mm-hmm. you, know, you, you keep you keep your do, your do busted, right? So busted. Tell me, now you know busted. That sound like Tyler Perry shit. Oh no, yeah. okay, I, don't, I just yeah, mean you keep it done. You 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 take care of it. And so it's a simple question: busting a good weave or a good wig? Both. No, you can't take. See, yes, you can. Both. See, no, which yes, you one? Can. If you it's had the bad. choice. Both. This or that, not oh, both. You got to do a shot, man. No chaser. Man, I, I can't be drinking out the bottle like that. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll be coming out here. They'll be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> and especially with Uncle Nearest and Guidance. Okay, I, I guess I'll do. Yeah, oh, she, can't the <laughs> she can't even pick. She can't even pick. All right, so I'm gonna be holding that wig in the morning when you see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick weed. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> look, all right. So, hey, hey, look, man. So you took a sip. You yeah. you just took a sip. I was, about to, the, I, was about, huh? what I was about to say with the yeah. answer your question. I'm from Detroit. You know, we were the hair capital of the world. You know, we had hair wars and stuff. So that's why I'm like both. Mm, all right, that was an easy way out. All right, so look, you you took a sip to that one. That's fine. But since since we're <laughs> talking about sipping. Uh-oh. Who would you rather have a drink with in 2024? Diddy or R. Kelly? <laughs> it is it's this or that. You ain't taking just no sip. Which one? Please don't say both. <laughs> Based off of what I know, what I know now, I say neither, but damn. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, because I've heard about Diddy back in the day. But in the early 2000s. He said, take that, take that. And then, yeah, and he was like, take yeah, that, take that, that for, that. uh, yes, that's what it was. That's what I heard. <laughs> one, of, one of my friends, he was actually, uh, so, he worked at Bowen as an accountant, but he, um, he dabbled in the BMF life. So he knew about some of that stuff. Now he wasn't somebody I messed with. He, we were just cool, but he told me about his old boyfriend down in Atlanta. So which one? Which one? You gotta pick uh, one. It's not. Di- it's in public, that. right? It's in public. Oh, hey man, it's whatever you want it to know. be. It gotta be in public because um, I don't want nobody peeing you on me. You from Detroit? You can fight. You yeah, can I fight. can, but but damn it, I ain't trying to. So public. So which on, one? So I guess I could do R. Kelly because you know I know Puffy is lacing his drinks with drugs. Hey, hey. allegedly. 
uh, allegedly. Yeah, you we gotta keep saying allegedly on here. <laughs> you can't say A to that P. Like, ooh. All right, so <laughs> all right, so this next this next question, it comes straight from your line sister, my dog. Oh, uh, what to wanna say? Right. She wants to know which do you prefer to be called one of the AKAs or one of the K's? <laughs> I'm an AKA. Uh, the K's. Uh, I'm not a Kappa. No oh, baby. Right. You you don't spend enough time in the mirror to be a Kappa. You are one hundred percent correct. <laughs> but what I mean, you know, if you're going to abbreviate some AKAs, already abbreviated. The K's, you know, basically they calling us Kappas. Okay, I'm dead, man. I was, I was just asking. Just ask. Mm -hmm. I know that's I know y'all love the tallest the case. And then the look younger ones. Oh, they the case, the case. I'm like, damn. You okay. skip one kid. No, I, I know, I know, I know. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't hear the K's until probably last 10, 15 years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Social know. media. It was Social media. Yeah. Yeah. So um for you personally, Netflix and Netflix and chill or a night out? With our Kelly. Not as joking. Just... <laughs> I ain't going with him. Hell no, he ain't peeing on me. <laughs> and on all the other stuff I heard that he does, mm -mm. I heard oh. he was a. You I've heard everybody. from another person who had yeah. an experience with him was that he's a he's a bad mannered. That's all I kept hearing. I would never be with him like that. Allegedly. Not young enough anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I ain't young enough. <laughs> uh, you already was... said 94. Yeah, yeah 94. Exactly. 94 <laughs> class yeah, of 94. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. You said, class of 94. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, if you said 14, he may. He may. <laughs> 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 you know it's funny because I wondered that before about another celebrity that's with my number and he was like can you travel and I was like yeah I'm grown and then he said this shit again and I'm like yeah I'm 29 this is when I was 29 and then I ain't never hear from his ass no more <laughs> so I think age <laughs> ain't nothing but a number <laughs> exactly and Lil was right <laughs> so which one are you you Netflix and chill or a night out Night out. I rarely watch TV. Okay. All right. Um. Then. Yeah. So you know, some some of these questions you've already uh, answered. So you know, I got to skip through them. So next up, Whitney Houston or Beyonce? I like dancing, so I say I'll go with Beyonce. All right. And then following up on Beyonce, you excited or are you just okay on the country version of Beyonce? I only heard one song. I didn't hear the sixteen carriage or so. I mean, it's all it's all right. I mean, it's I listen to country, country. sometimes. I mean, it's not like I listen to country all the time, but I have listened to country. I actually got Tennessee whiskey on my phone right now. Hey, that's a hit. What are you talking yeah, about? Mm -hmm. All right. So this isn't a this or that, but one of the the team members asked this question, so you know, put it on here. So here we go. Would you tell your friend that her husband or significant others is always stinking when they come around? <laughs> she laughs hard. Like, like that's why don't she smell it? Why don't she smell it? I mean, I guess she used to, it. but mm. I she won't say. It. I got it. I won't say. It. I won't say it. You just put up with it? I mean, just like um, I've had a friend and her breath smelled. And mm. I, I always wondered, like, how well, can we he went, kiss her? We went to class with somebody like that. Well, so yeah. I told her, this, this I told her to jump out of the car. Give you a long hug. <laughs> he, 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 in a while. he did. It's okay. <laughs> and I, got a dirty colon. I mean, I, I just won't, I won't say anything. I mean, I just won't say it. She but to I try not to be stuff. around her. <laughs> but he ain't right. singing in a while. He want to give you a hug and be like, well, hey, hey let me ask you a question, though. Would you have second thoughts about your, your friend, though? I just will wonder why she don't smoke. Okay. 
I mean, but like, I, like I wondered why my friend didn't smell, you know, the woman's mouth, uh, her breath, you know, and they be kissing. I'm like thinking. She got a bad teeth or something. That's what I was it. thinking. Yeah, that's what I was Root thinking. Canal. Yeah. Some people, they need to have their teeth clean and but go to the dentist. That, they got to clean out their tonsils with that white stuff to be in the bag. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's that too. Paul. So, the Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So, given that we know that uh, you've been, you attended both an HBCU and a PWI, which one? Wait, wait, if you had it all to do over again and you can only do one way or the other, which one and why? I go to Tennessee State, which was on my list my junior year of high school. That's where I was going. Okay. But um, I changed my my thoughts because of my son's father. Oh, you know, I oh. know all oh, that was stupid. Oh, you never. So sweet. If any if any young girls ever get out there, never make a college decision based on a guy. That's true. Be because, I mean, he he wasn't at Michigan State. But he was playing basketball. He played basketball and he was playing at a junior college at the time, which is in Grand Rapids. It was Grand Rapids Community College. So I was like, I'll go to Michigan State. And um, so that's why I ended up there. Although Michigan State has a lot of great amenities, and I lived in a sports dorm. So the basketball team, I knew them. Um, some of the football players, you know, and some of the track team, because I lived in sports dorm. But it wasn't like it wasn't geared towards us. So I remember like every week the white kids would go out in my dorm. They had places to go, um, to bars and all that different type of stuff. They'd go and have fun. They, you know, they had a great time, but it wasn't as much stuff for us to do. Um then if we had things, like say they had like little impromptu step show or whatever, the police came and they would break it up. Now, our dorms, we had uh, the Black Caucuses. Now, we had, each dorm tend to have, like, something. So, those were nice. But outside of that, mm. and TSU, I would say it was more geared towards us. And what I saw at TSU, especially with the sports players and their majors, that's one thing that I really enjoyed i mean i say i just like oh yay but i was i was surprised because i remember seeing guys on play football and basketball were computer science majors or engineer majors you didn't have that in michigan state at all because they were you, there to play you were waiting that long ass registration line in 1994 over michigan state yes <laughs> can't you remember no lines dog yeah man for us <laughs> But you know, I would tell you, I really didn't have a, but when I transferred, I didn't truly have an extremely long line because I, I stayed on my shit. I ain't never get purged. I didn't either, but that line was still long. <laughs> so since you, since you know about sports and you know about uh, the, the sports at Michigan State, mm -hmm. last question for you. Should Mel Tucker have gotten... No. That's the guy that uh, was messing with the white woman, right? Now, yeah. I'm not going to say I don't, I, I didn't keep up with him, but okay. he's stupid. Let me just All tell right. you that right now. Because no one, if you play sports and even if you're coaching or whatever, you know what people are after you for. Because I used to see it. When I was at Michigan State, like I said, my friends, they played basketball. Used to have girls walking 15 minutes from one dorm to our dorm in Wonders. In the middle of winter, in some high, you know, skirts. And of course, you know, they had like some stockings on, but these high heels and all this makeup. It's dead of winter, January. Y'all know how that is if you're from the North. You know what they're there for. I remember this other guy these white girls came, you know, they throw themselves at these dudes. So you know they're there for a reason. It's not like they're there to try to get money. So for him to make that decision that he didn't make, that was stupid. He fumbled the bag, but yeah, it is, that, fumbled, that was stupid. God, he, fumbled the bag. He, he definitely fumbled the bag. Man. All right. So listen, thank you. 
Huh? Well, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna talk about coaches, now my favorite coach, he's an assistant coach though, for the men's basketball, TK, Thomas Kelly. That was my boy. So if we talk about coaches. Still, still shout out to Mel Tucker. You from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. What what's going on? Well, you from the bad. Enough said. Now we understand why he did that. That's why he made that decision. I ain't go to That's why he did that. He he went to yeah. he he went to school with Travis Kelsey. Or he went oh, to Travis Kelsey. He went, school. he went to school with uh Travis. Not with not with Wait, what's, what's that girl? School. Uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. He went to school with Travis Swift. Oh, <laughs> Listen, man. So look, <laughs> that 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 is the fun time. The 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 words of wisdom. I want to thank you for being, you know, just a a willing participant, and having fun, and willing to, you know, just laugh a little bit. So hey. we 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 are rounding third and headed home. We get to the point of the show where we have a words of wisdom. This is the an opportunity that we offer to any guest to share some some nuggets of information uh, with our audience, with us, whomever. It, it can be about your career field. It can be about life. It can be about whatever it is that you <laughs> want it to be about. But can you can you leave the audience with some words of wisdom for us? Basically, everybody can do cybersecurity. Everybody can program if they put their mind to it. The reason I say that, especially with programming, we give directions to people every day. If you're if you're able to tell somebody how to get to your house or to go to some other um, establishment that if they're asking for directions, you're able to program. And uh, even my students, they're looking at me like, I don't think I could do it. Yes, you can. You're, you can give directions to anything else. All you're doing is giving directions to that computer to set up there, to, to the computer to do what you want it to do. That's all that is. And if you start like with a language like Python, you really should be able to do it. Um, as far as cybersecurity, the reason I say everybody can do that because all of cybersecurity is not technical. Um, you have people who can go from education into cybersecurity, where they can do the cybersecurity where it's training. You have sales, um, you have um, marketing, uh, data analytics within cybersecurity, you know, how you have all those infographics out there. So the people who work in art, they can get into the field as well. So everybody can get into it. Okay, so bottom line is don't think that you can't. Cause exactly. Because if you think that you can't, then you can't. So that's basically a, what a imposter syndrome. Don't use it. Okay. And black people and women, to, not just black people, minorities and women tend to have imposter syndrome a lot. Syndrome a lot. So we need to stop doing that. Okay. Well, Thank you very much again, Renita, for being a, a, a participant and being a guest on the show. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We always love to get our intelligent brothers and sisters on here to talk about what it is that they do, the things they have the passion for, and really to let everybody know that you, like you just said in your words of wisdom, that you too can do it. And mm -hmm. that these careers are out here and available. And especially when our guests are from Tennessee State University. T T S S S U. That's right. The land of golden sunshine. So yes. before we before we get out of here, our um is there the anything bar? is there anything that you have going on that you want to let the audience know about? Any um any website, another paper that you know, I know you said you you got you published the white paper. Anything you got going on, any social media, anything. If you don't want it, you don't have to shout it out if you don't want it. Um, but you know, let the people know anything about you. Actually. As of right now, I am extremely busy, um, not just with work and the adjunct, being an adjunct. I have boards that I'm participating on. Oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, let me see something. Hold up. I want to make sure I say it correctly. And I can send it to you guys, but sure. there is a, one of my, he's actually your frat brother. Dr. Pierre Johnson, he's part of Cost of Perseverance 3. So it's about three three different doctors. Every every month they give out a $1,000 scholarship. 
through college students. But they have, they're developing an app. Well, the, the app will go live in May. And it's for uh, mentoring. It's a mentoring app for STEM, well, STEM and STEAM. And they need people. And they need people to sign up to become mentors because you're mentoring kids from urban city, urban cities. You also have, um, so they're trying to connect people. It's not, this isn't mine, but it's something that I, you know, I'd like to kind of get that out there. Sure. Yeah. Well, oh, so everybody out here, just um, look at it. It's on the bottom of the screen. We'll have it displayed for you and we can go from there. All right. All right. All right. So before we got get out of here, Scott Jones, can you let the people know once again where they can find us? Well, if you like the show as much as I did, go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe button right here on YouTube. Catch us on Facebook, Instagram, as well as TikTok at the Urban Retrospect. We're also on Twitter at Retrospect1619. If you want to review your product, have any questions, shoot us an email at the Urban Retrospect at gmail.com. And lastly, Catch everything on www.theurbanretrospect.com. And Black history is American history. It sure is. Definitely is. is. Honestly, it's world history. Exactly. I need to to get one that has world history, but this is Power Black Tea, so I want to give a shout out on that. And then I also see Big G with that love always from DJ Always represent right there. I had Yes, sir. So Anyway, it's and the greatest my... fictional HBCU in, in in history, and that's because it's a different world. That's because from, <laughs> from where you're coming from. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Aretha. Look, y'all should have <laughs> told me to put to on that shirt. We focus on our goal. <laughs> we Most represent the HBCU all the time. <laughs> all right, everybody. So once again, thank you, Renita, for joining. Thank you, the Renita. Show. You're you welcome. Know, uh, we again, if there's anything you ever want to promote, talk about, whatever, this is we we open, we open for you. Release that we book. Give on. us a holler. All right. Um, all right. And to all the fans out there, thank you for tuning in. And you know how we do it about this time. We want to leave you with peace, love, and retrospect. Play the music.